It's day two and the nightcap here in the Governor's Challenge. The teams flowing in since early this morning. Fans taking part in some video games on the concourse and coaches with their final preparations before tonight's meeting. It'll be Veritas Prep and Legacy meeting here in Salisbury. Along with Brandon Green, I'm Matt Present. So glad you can join us here from the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center here in Salisbury, Maryland. We saw Veritas prep a night ago, and Brandon, they were relatively disappointing against Central Point, a 72-44 loss. Iverson Molinar, only, he was limited to nine points. Expect more from him here tonight. Yeah, you're definitely going to expect more from him. That 28-point loss has to stick with him in their crow because they traveled all the way from California to get here to Eastern Maryland. That's one coast to the other coast. And one thing that was evident for them, they're going to have to cut down on the turnovers. They had too many of those. Their half-court offense was stagnant. They really only got it going when they were in transition. But another thing for them is their rotation defense. Central Point was able to just pick them apart and get whatever shot that they wanted. Meanwhile, Legacy, 15-3 and three on the season, was ranked as high as 36 by Prep Circuit preseason. They've fallen out of those rankings since, but still a very solid crew for B.J. Jackson and company, and they're led by a trio. Jalen McCreary, C.J. Jamison, and Rodney Howard. Yeah, you mentioned that trio. They have a lot of depth on this team. Expect a lot of subs in this one, and their rebounding should be the difference for them tonight. If they can control the boards, they're going to be able to control this game. And also, that leads us to point number three, which is controlling the pace, which is something you're going to have to do against this um, Vertos team, and that's because they like to get out and run. Uh, what we saw last night, Central Point, they were able to slow the game down, use a half-court game, and that's really where they were effective last night in beating Veritas. No question about it. The other thing to watch for here today is a bit of an SEC preview for next year. Iverson Molinar, a three-star Mississippi State recruit, or commit, I should say. Meanwhile, on the other side for Legacy, Rodney Howard. He's committed to go to Old Miss. Those two will be rivals not just tonight, but next season at the college level. Yeah, I don't expect them to be matched up on each other too much tonight. Two different positions and two different games. Iverson Molinar is able to get to the basket, create his own shot, where Rodney Howard really gets it done on the offensive glass and the defensive glass, and he gets you a couple post-ups a game, but he's really that energy type of player for this legacy team. Just about time for tip-off, and we mentioned Howard, his 6'11 frame. He will jump center. Veritas missing a couple of players from a night ago. Rafael Fuller and Ismail Cruz not with the team tonight. Amar Brown also will be sidelined with a knee injury. So more playing time for Kirk Smith and company as you see him wearing number 35. Elijah Scranton also in the starting lineup. We are just about set to go. Veritas in the red uniforms with black numerals. And Legacy in white, trimmed with navy and gold. Tip control by Prep. They're moving left to right. And this is Stefan Gabriel with it. Bryce Craver a touch. Back to Gabriel. Crossover down the lane. Lost it off his leg. And that was another thing about their half-court offense last night. They, they did a nice job of getting a high pick and roll, but then from that... You have to create, and you can't cause a turnover like that. This is McCreary. Gets it down low. Early touch, an easy bucket for Rodney Howard. Now that is the Rodney Howard that we're going to see a lot of tonight. That seal was perfect, and the pass was right on point for the easy bucket. So Legacy on the board first, courtesy of Howard. Gabriel with it, again going to work. Nearly had it stolen away, but he draws the foul on Caleb Mack. This legacy team is really aggressive. They get up into the grill of their defenders. They know that the help side is going to be there. Rodney Howard can affect the paint. And when you know you have a big guy in the middle like that that can negate a lot of mistakes, it forces you as a defender to play up. Carlos Rosario onto the floor as... They sub out after the foul. This is Molinar in the backcourt. He had a team high nine points last night, but Molinar averages close to 20 on the season. Fires from deep, it hits back iron, 
And on the run out comes Jamison. Like you see, around the perimeter. To the rack, and drawing the foul there is Chase Claxton. We see this legacy team, their emphasis early is to get the ball inside and to drive the basketball. Maybe they were watching last night and they saw the half-court defense of Veritas and how you're able to attack the middle, and that seems what they seem to be doing early. So an opportunity to get on the board from the free throw line. In and out on the first from Claxton, the 6'6 senior forward. Over for 2 at the line. Loose ball controlled by Howard. Ducks between the double team, couldn't finish with the left. And Kirk Smith cleans up the glass. Got to finish, the beautiful footwork right there by Howard. Molinar bump, no call, out of bounds. We'll head to Legacy. It seems like Iverson right now is forcing the action. He's not letting the game come to him. We saw him shoot that early three in the shot clock, and then he tried to attack early. You're not going to be able to go into the body of a player like Rodney Howard. Molinar now called for a foul in the backcourt as he was applying the full court defensive pressure against Caleb Mack, the point guard. They stick with the full court. And after Mack controls the inbound, they'll back off. Mack averaging just shy of five assists per game this season. McCreary hands to Jamison up top. 15 on the shot clock. Now it's Claxton. He turns down the screen. Jamison in the corner has it poked free. Five to shoot. McCreary for Claxton. Corner triple, knocks it down. And that's what was killing Veritas last night is that corner three. Again, somebody wide open off a single pass rotation. Last night, Victor Rosa drained four of them. Four central point on their way to a 72 to 44 victory. Four different players finished in double figures and a foul before the shot. Moving screen, I believe, is the call against Rosario. As we mentioned before, you have to allow the player to set the screen. You're not going to be able to um, just roll off the screens. You have to be able to set it and then come off the screen. If you were not with us in game one today, Newman Garetti held on for a 68 to 65 victory over Gilman, who had a Last second effort to tie the score just at the end of regulation, but it was not meant to be. Kirk Smith cleans up the glass on the missed shot. Here's Craver in the front court. Legacy up 5-0 in the early going. Two and a half minutes gone by in the opening quarter. Smith calling for it in the corner. Gabriel backs it out. Gabriel driving right. Didn't get the angle off the window. Offensive rebound. Molinar the triple. That's no good. Again, Gabriel on the glass. And a jump ball on the block attempt from Claxton. Very stagnant offense for this Veritas team right now. It's just one man attacking. Let's see some more of that high pick and roll and see a little bit more ball moving. Make this legacy team move side to side. We know they have size, but how do they move laterally? We have to get to see that. Again, Ismail Cruz not with the team tonight. He averages 21 on the season, a primary ball handler. And we're seeing the lack of rhythm with his absence as McCreary connects on the long two. That's what we want to see from McCreary. He's the number six recruit, according to 24-7, in South Carolina. Molinar is called for traveling. He got contact, but they're letting them play here in the early stages. Yeah, he's letting them play a lot in this one, but... You have to take advantage of that and go into the body of the defender. George Zidane out on the court. He wanted a foul call. Veritas making their way all the way across the country from the state of California as you check out the map of all the different teams that we are covering here in the showcase portion of the event. Veritas, the first ever California team to make it here to the Governor's Challenge. And you see with the yellow lion there in South Carolina. That represents Legacy Early College. Yes, Legacy coming from Greenville, South Carolina, which is 20 minutes from football powerhouse Clemson University. Central Point down in Florida. We saw them last night, and in day four of this tournament, we'll see the northernmost team 
Father Henry Carl making the 12 hour bus ride down from Toronto. So Legacy up a touchdown in the early going, 437 to play in the opening quarter. And what's really prominent in this one is the size of Rodney Howard is affecting this Veritas team. They're not able to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Open three-pointer, McCreary connects. And that is a pure jump shot right there by the lefty. Able to knock down the mid-range, now showing you the outside touch. We know him as a finisher, but showing that touch is extremely important for his game. Pick and pop for Smith. He answers with a three of his own. And that's what you have to do against the bigger Rodney Howard. He's not used to playing out on the wing. Back the other way. Triple on this side misses. And Smith looking to run. Scoop shot at the rim. Gets it to fall. And we've seen Smith's role expand here with Veritas down a couple men. And he shows that he can do it both outside and in. And that's where this Veritas team is at their best. Getting these defensive stops and getting down the runner, Letting their athletes go to work. Blackston drives hard and draws the foul. It'll go against Craver. Nice drive right there. Defender was playing too much on him, so what do you do? You just attack that foot and attack the body of the health defender. So Claxton heads to the free throw line. A good free throw shooter at 73% on the season. Bends his knees and drains the first. And talk about traveling. Claxton, originally from Dallas, Texas, and now he goes to school in Greenville, South Carolina. One of two at the line. And Scran called for carrying on the hesitation move. We talk about Smith role expanding. Gabriel listed as a forward on the roster. He's been pressed into heavy ball carrying actions or handling actions, I guess I should say. Yeah, we should see him as more as that Lamar Odom type of player, that point forward. And he can be extremely effective in that role. Mack with it up top. Knocked away briefly out of the hands of Teron Calhoun Ty, uh, Tucker, who's just come on the floor. Good rotation open for McCreary. That's off the mark. Offensive rebound. Claxton bothered on the shot. And a foul called. I don't know too much about the foul, Matt. That looked like a jump ball to me. They'll stay with Legacy. They will inbound. Jameson peels back up top. Six-point lead for the Lions. Back to Jameson. Looking to get it inside instead. Back up top. Mack to Jameson. Skip pass from the free throw line. Claxton. Scoop shot. Gets the roll. That's too easy. It's just ball swing from one side to the other. They get Veritas leaning, and then they just attack. That's been their offense so far in this first quarter, which is why they're up by eight. Meanwhile, Molinar held quiet, trying to get on a track, missed the three, and Claxton with the rebound. I want to see Molinar be able to get to the basket more. Uh, that's how you get your game going. Hit a couple of free throws, see that ball go through the hoop. Entry pass picked off by Craver. Granton, Euro step and kick. Molinar down the lane, shot altered, and he draws the foul. That's exactly what you want to see. Your jump shot isn't falling, so try to get to the lines. Just see the ball go through the hoop, and then that hoop gets a little bit bigger, and now your game is coming back. You're in a rhythm. Two oh six to play, opening quarter as Molinar steps to the line. And makes the first. Molinar this season, 19.2 points per game to go along with three and a half assists. A late bloomer for George Zidane. In fact, he did not get his first scholarship offer until this summer, but already committed to play at a very high level in the SEC for Ben Howland at Mississippi State. Makes a pair of free throws. First points of the game for Molinar. You see with a six-point lead, they have the basketball. Yeah. 
Nice high-low action to try and get the ball down there to Rodney Howard because he has the mismatch against Kurt Smith. Rodney Howard at 6'11", Kurt Smith listed at 6'7". Veritas doing a good job to deny him the basketball, though. He got an easy bucket on their first possession offensively, has not touched it much since. Nine on the shot clock, McCreary, McCreary will inbound. This is Mack with it. Six to shoot. Spinning down the lane, Mack gets the roll. That's a good move right there. Defender is on his heels, he just attacks him. And that pretty spin move, and then the finesse to get it right over the lip of the rim. Back to an eight point lead for Veritas. Molnar up top, three pointer on the way. That's off the mark, he's struggling from the floor here in the first quarter. Calhoun Tucker surveying. Claxton for McCreary. They swing it outside. Mack now with it left wing. Looking for Howard. They get it to him. Hop step. Slipped on the ground and is called for traveling. That's the right call right there. And as a defender, that is a great job of bodying up Howard and not falling back. Under a minute to play now in the opening quarter. Veritas Prep trying to cut into the eight-point deficit. Smith, the corner triple, too strong. Offensive board, Molinar. Leaner from the free throw line, no good. And Howard has the rebound. Outlet pass into a double team, but it works out. It will stay at this end of the floor. Didn't need that pass right there. Just come back. Set up the half-court offense that you've been so effective in. Six-second separation, shot clock, and game clock. I can see up eight here, first quarter. Good pump fake. Mack steps into it and knocks it down from just beyond the free throw line. Nice fundamentals right there. Get the defender on his feet. Nice pump fake. And then the footwork for the mid-range shot. Kind of a loss of art that we haven't seen too much in this tournament is the mid-range shot. Shot clock is off. Molinar operating in the front court. Craver, seven. Back to Molinar, five left in the quarter. Baseline drive, the floater is money. Iverson Molinar, a tough angle on that type of shot, but he gets it to fall. And at the end of one, it's legacy 17 and Veritas 9. Back with the second quarter of play in just a moment. You're watching NFHS Network Hoops live on Facebook Watch. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Iverson and Molinar making the running floater to end the first quarter. It was his first field goal, Brandon, and how can they look to get him some better looks here in the second quarter? What I would like to see is more of the high pick and roll and just have him create off that. And when he has the ball in his hand, he's a creator. Uh, it just comes natural to him. So being able to get his teammates shots is how they're going to be able to break down this legacy defense. But this legacy team is long, and they are big, Matt. And they were using that to their advantage in the first quarter. Molnar has it moving left to right. Veritas trailing by eight after one. This is Gabriel to Molinar. Working against the 2-3 zone. Gabriel lets it fly. He knocks down the triple. And as you mentioned earlier, Stefan Gabriel getting more of a role in this game, especially with Molinar struggling. Mack. 
Matt comes to get it. Shot clock at 15. Jamison surveys out top to Howard and the pass overthrown. They were trying to go high low to Calhoun Tucker. And he had a nice seal right there. Rodney Howard, you just have to put that, you just have to put that ball on him. And it's just a nice lefty layup. It's easy. Up top Smith for three. He connects. Kirk Smith now with eight in the game. Two for, three, two for two on threes to start the quarter, and that has them right back into this game, only down by two now, able to hit that outside shot. Damon Reyes into the game for Veritas. He's marking Howard in the block. Down the lane goes Mack, unable to put enough English on it to get the roll. Smith up ahead, thought about the three, passed it up. Craver will reset. Gabriel watched by Mack, now to Craver. Straight down the lane, scoop shot, great touch off the window. Pretty hanging finish right there, attacking the heart of that 2-3 zone. And that's what you have to do, attack the heart, and then the outside is going to come, and you've already seen him knock down a couple threes. That ties the game at 17, and B.J. Jackson, or rather that's George Zidane on the legacy bench. On the Veritas bench, I flip-flopped him. Veritas asking for time. Seventeen all after the first quarter plus. Brandon, you've had a minute to circle some stats. What caught your eye? Uh, what really caught my eye is Iverson Muller, one for six, over four from the three-point line, but two or two from the line. Just get to the line. You obviously see that they're fouling and that you can get to the line. So why not just do that more? And for this legacy team, they're leading rebounding right now. They're up eight to seven, and that is why they're in the lead of this game because. For them to win, they're going to have to control that backboard. Legacy also 7-2 to two in terms of points off turnovers as you just got a second look at that beautiful touch from Craver at the rim. All square at 17 out of the timeout. This is Jamison with it in between the circles. Mack left wing. And a moving screen called on Howard. Yeah, for Howard, he kind of leaned into that screen to get the defender. Right now, you don't have to really do that. The defender was already hedging and going over the screen. You just had to slip in, and you were going to be wide open for the easy layup. He set a wide base. I don't think he leaned. It was unconventional. Usually, guys are very tight to their body and how they right. position themselves. So I understand why the call was made. Even at 17, Craver in the front court. Quickly to the rack. Help defense bothered the shot. That was Howard sliding in. Great defense by Howard going straight up. That's what you want to teach a young big man. You're not going to block everything. Just keep your hands straight up. Trying to get it to Howard. The defense collapses. Leaves Calhoun Tucker open for three. And a loose ball foul on the rebound. The size of Howard is really affecting this Veras team right now. He didn't even have to jump there. All he had to do was just put his hands right over the defender. Two and a half gone by here in the second quarter. Referees are trying to sort something out. And I guess that was the seventh team foul. That's all I can think of. I think they're they put that, Howard at the line. I think they said that he was in the act of shooting on a putback. Uh, I don't It must really be know, because that's not a one in one situation yeah. there. We have it as six team fouls as indicated on the score bug. Certainly an interesting kind of last minute change to the initial call on the floor as Howard missed them both. Ball don't lie. 17 <laughs> all, Craver in the front court. Molinar, inside out dribble, floater, tough shot, gets it all. Nice roll, that's what you want to see from him. He saw a foot in the paint. That's where he needs to get to. And just do that, and yet the rest of the game is going to come for him. You just have to relax and play your game. You talk about all the shots he's missed. The, the ones he's hit are probably his toughest looks. That's usually what happens when you're in a shooting slump. 
seems like the easy shots are the, are the worst ones and the, the hard shots are the best ones. Oftentimes you think less on the more difficult shot attempts. Foul called away from the ball as Calhoun Tucker now heads to the bench. Five minutes to go in the first half. Veritas was down 7-0. They're now up a pair. Molinar lost it on the way up. It'll stay at that end of the floor. It feels like this Veritas team has gotten used to the size of Legacy. It took a little bit of adjusting and getting used to, but now you see they're able to attack. And this, Ver and this Legacy team's lateral quickness is a little bit slower than Veritas. Turnaround shot from Gabriel off the back iron. Put back, no good as Scranton hit the deck. And here comes Mack on the run out. McCreary cutting to the rim, went up for the dunk and was bumped as Reyes got him with the body. Reyes, that was about to be your Kodak moment. Nice foul right there. Don't let him get anything easy. So McCreary will head to the free throw line and your point about adjusting to the size, Brandon, I think on this end of the floor, defensively, they've really collapsed and frustrated Howard, and no one has been able to hit the outside shot yet to make the pack. Yeah, because now they're fronting the post, and that's what you want to see. As you see, Jalen McCreary almost got there. He almost got there, Matt. But still, good play just to foul and make him go to the line and knock two down. But getting back to this legacy team, they have to hit that outside shot because they're fronting the post now. They're not letting you do what you were doing earlier in the game. So now it's time to switch up the game plan go to something different. Legacy struggling at the free throw line. They get the offensive rebound and off the glass goes McCreary for two. That looked like an and one right there. The refs are really letting them play in this one still. McCreary, big, strong, able to finish. McCreary has seven. All even at 19. Thirteen to shoot for Molinar. Crossover dribble, ducks between two, and on the second effort he finds Twine. Way to stay with it that time, going through both of those defenders, knowing that the shot was off. Just go back and get it. Short corner, tough angle, and that's no good from McCreary. Out of bounds to Veritas. We touched on Molinar and how he was such a late bloomer, but a lot of the fact that he didn't get so much attention, I think, has to be in part to the fact that this is his fourth different high school in as many years. It has not been a straight line in terms of his progression through the years. Yeah, and that has an effect on different players. For Kevin Durant, he went to four high school in four different years, and he became one of the best players in the NBA. You see Molinar missing it right there, but for most of these kids, you want that stability. You wonder what impact that has in terms of eyeballs recruiting-wise as Gabriel gets the pluck and lost it on the Euro step. Trying to split the defenders right there. When you don't have the numbers, it's always a good highlight to split and do the Euro step on the other side. But most of the time, just bring it out, wait for your help to come. Like you see, with the ball down by two. Mack setting up the offense. Jamison up top to McCreary. Baseline drive again. Smith blocked the shot, but is gone for the foul. And as you look at this legacy team, they switched up their offense a little bit. Now they're going to the four corners of the paint and trying to work action off that. Nice screen and roll for McCreary coming off the double screen, able to get into the paint. Legacy so far tonight struggling from the free throw line. Now one of seven. You have to hit the three ones right now. And this legacy team isn't able to do it. As you see, nice ball screen, nice off ball screen. And then McCreary. It looked, looked like awfully a clean, clean block, but still the ref made the call and he's able to knock down the free throw. Two for eight now at the line. One point game. And during that last free throw, Rosario came back on the floor in place of Craver for Veritas. This is Rosario to Smith. Chest pass into the post. Wraparound shot doesn't fall. That was, this is Molinar. And an easy jam in transition. He gets the steal, showing off the hops on offense and defense within seconds. 
Now you see that defense coming around now. Now he's into the game, sitting down in his stance. This Veritas team is ready to go. They're up by three. Howard doubled it momentarily in the post. Now we'll back down. He'll kick it out. Three-pointer short from Claxton. Howard tried to keep alive the rebound, but throws it out of bounds. Nice double team by this Veritas team. You know you're undersized, but you know if you don't send help, Howard is going to eat you down low. Nice switching it up. Nice coaching adjustment. Adjustment. Gabriel into Smith. Elbow extended. Rosario directing traffic. Ticking down to two minutes to play. Opening half. Scranton hesitates and is called for palming it. That's the second time we've seen this call, Brandon, and that's something that does not get called often. Yeah, it definitely doesn't get called often because he did it before in his dribble sequence, and I thought they were going to call it there, but it seemed like a makeup call. A three-pointer for Legacy would even the score as Mack walks it up the timeline. McCreary, top of the key. Claxton now with it, watched by Smith. Into Howard, going to work against two. Off the mark, too strong. Rosario through traffic, all the way to the rim, finger rolls it home. And Veritas is getting it done at the defensive end. They have only held them to one field goal in this quarter so far, and that is transitioning into easy offense. Nice job by Rosario, coast to coast. Junior out of the Dominican Republic. Nearly turned it over, Claxton to the rescue. Skip past Jamison, and he took a step. Now this Veritas team looks as though they're imposing their will. They have to close this quarter out strong. All that work that you did to get this lead, close the quarter out strong, go to halftime with a nice cushion. George Zidane fired up on the far side bench, trying to implore his team to close out this first half, like you said, on a positive note. Smith up top. Bodies flying on the far side, no call. Smith, near side. Three-pointer up, and that's way short from Gabriel. And it hit the end line. And they got him on a foul. So it'll be an inbound now under the basket. Caleb Mack whistled for the infraction and now another foul. This time it looks like it'll go against McCreary. We talked about them letting them play early on, but a couple of foul calls here away from the ball in the final stages of the first half. Yeah, it seems like the refs are tightening up the whistle just a little bit just to gain some more control in this game. Scranton bulldozing down the lane, and I believe that's an offensive foul. Right call right there. He was a little bit out of control going into the body of the defender. Nine-second difference, shot clock and game clock, 39 to play here in the first half. Saquon Curriton into the ball game. 12 in white with those flashy gold shoes. Howard against two. Passes out of the double team cross court. Three ball up. Too strong from Claxton. And the rebound controlled by Veritas. Smith in the front court. 10 seconds to play. Gabriel draws the foul at the rim. This Veritas team now is looking how Legacy was looking in that first quarter. Attacking the paint. Drawing a lot of contact and getting to the line. Gabriel this season averaging 13 points per game and four rebounds. Headed to play collegiately at Bradley University next fall. Knocks down the first of two. Noah Laurie into the game. Damon Reyes also on the floor for the final seconds for Veritas as 
George Zidane wants to guard against foul trouble. Little offense, defense. Two for two at the line. Gabriel's got five. Five seconds to play. Corner three ball. Currenton knocks it down. Off the bench, Saquon Currenton caps off the first half for Legacy. A tight one here. Legacy was up 7-0 early. Veritas has drawn back. And at the break, they lead 27-23. Halftime here in Salisbury. We'll be back with you in a few moments with some halftime thoughts and analysis. Again, you're watching NFHS Network Hoops on Facebook Watch. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. At the half, Veritas prep up by four. They lost badly yesterday to Central Point. They started off slowly here today, Brandon, but they've gotten back into it very aggressive. And as you mentioned, it seems like they've gotten more and more comfortable with the size of the Legacy Lions. Yeah, at first they were, I wouldn't say that they were afraid to pack the paint, but it didn't seem like they wanted to go in the paint and deal with the size and go into the body. But then that second quarter, it seemed like they got loose a little bit more. Iverson Muller is able to get into the paint, and now they're attacking the body. And now they look like they're the legacy team that was in that first quarter, and legacy is starting to look like Veritas Prep. The Lions capped off the first half with this triple from Currenton, who just came off the bench a moment ago. He's a good three-point shooter at 54% this season, but only averages five and a half points per game. Nice to see him cap off that first half and get the Lions back into it after... They slowed down towards the latter stages of that half, and I think a lot of it had to do with the way that Veritas adjusted in the post against Howard. How can they get him more looks moving forward? Right now, I would go more into that pick and roll. You saw him be able to get Jalen McQuarrie off the down screens, off the pick and roll, was in the high post, and then for them, it's just getting Howard more touches. We saw they are double teaming, so I would even get him the ball in the post and just let the double team come and then let him make a decision off of that. Stats, hot off the press. We'll come back and talk about them next. You're watching NFHS Network Hoops live on Facebook Watch.
Matt President, Brandon Green back with you at the half. Veritas up by four on Legacy. And the Lions in the second quarter held to just six points. The biggest thing that jumps out to me, Brandon, the damage done at the free throw line or lack thereof. Yeah, because Legacy has been able to get there, but they haven't been able to capitalize. Shooting 20% from the free throw line is a recipe for disaster in a game like this. And then Veritas Prep is 4 for 4 But a thing that really is interesting to me, Matt, is Veritas Prep 17 rebounds, Legacy just 13. Veritas Prep is controlling the boards, finishing those defensive possessions, which is a flip from the first quarter when Legacy was leading the re rebounding category. And that's despite being smaller in stature across the board primarily. And again, we talked about Rodney Howard, the Ole Miss commit. He scored the first two points of the game, has not really scored since. And they've been unable to get him the ball. Veritas has collapsed the defense. And until that last second three by Curriton, they really had not cashed in on the exterior to make the defense pay for closing in. Yeah, and there was a tale of two quarters. In that first quarter, Legacy was shooting over 50%, Veritas Prep under 30. And then it flip-flopped. Veritas Prep was the team shooting over 50%, and Legacy was the team shooting under 30. These two teams talking things over in the locker room. Coach Brandon, your adjustments. For me right now, it's Rodney Howard. Get Rodney Howard the ball. Let him just go on the inside and dominate the paint. That's where you win these games It's in the paint, especially against a smaller team. You are letting this Veritas team off the hook when you're not getting Rodney the ball. Points in the paint right now, 12 to 8 in favor of Veritas. As you see the two, two teams back on the court and Rodney Howard getting loosened up. Of course, we mentioned a Ole Miss commit. He will head down next season to play for Kermit Davis. And he has two double-doubles this season. So a guy who can really provide for his team offensively and also rebound the basketball Look for him to get going in the second half. We'll have that second half of action coming up for you in just a minute. Take one last time out here at the break. Once again, the score. It's Veritas 27 and Legacy 23. Back in a moment, you're watching the NFHS Network Hoops live on Facebook Watch. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. To right. Iverson Molinar between, between the circles. The this is now Molinar. Second half yesterday, he came out with an exclamation mark. That is a thunder dunk right there. Just puts the defender on a poster. Welcome to your Kodak moment, sir. And that's how Iverson Muller was able to get his team going in that second half. They weren't able to sustain it, but in that second quarter, we saw Iverson Muller getting into the paint, and they were able to sustain it this time, and now they're up 27 to 23. Yesterday from Molinar and Veritas, a 72 to 44 loss to Central Point. Molinar finished with nine points, but that led the team. So really, Veritas struggling from the floor overall. They're playing much better as a group here in this game as they shot it in the first half at 40%. Just about ready to get things going here in half number two. Legacy will start with the basketball and move from left to right. CJ Jamison will bring it up the floor. He had a double-double a week or so ago, 16 and 16 against Christ School. This is Jamison, triple coming off front rim and the rebound collected by Veritas looking to run. They lob it for Molinar, hoop and harm. Again, Molinar is starting off the second half with a spectacular bucket, able to go up and get that ball and put it home. What a great play from Molinar. And Brandon, I think what impressed me most about that play is that he didn't try to dunk it. It's so easy when you rise up for the alley-oop to 
have the dunk in the back of your head or probably even the front of your head in, in that situation, but he was under control and able to finish off the window and converts at the line. Yes, it seems like Molinar is now getting into his game after that rough first quarter. Veritas again on the defensive end. Molinar for the flush. Molinar, don't make me stand up now. You making me stand up. Come on, Molinar. That is what I am talking about. Getting out and running and being able to finish with a dunk. This Veritas team, they look like they're about to break this game open. Nearly another steal as McCreary misses on the shot. And Scranton trying to create some space called for the offensive foul. This Veritas team, they are letting their defense become their offense, being able to get steals and get out in the break. And when you have Molinar finished in like that, it just becomes a dunk show out here. One more look at that flush a moment ago from the right hand of Iverson Molinar. Look at his head. And, and then the expression after it. That lets you know he's having a good time out here. Matt cut off back outside. Claxton with it. Eight to shoot. Driving down the lane. Scoop shot. Gets the roll. Looked like an and one out right there. But like we said before, these refs are letting him play in this game. 32-25. Smith thought about the three, turns it down. Craver, near side now with it, directing traffic, 12 to shoot. Molnar calling for it and gets it. Backing down from outside the arc and called for clearing out. Great call, ref. He was trying to get around the fender with that hook. A nice veteran savvy move right there by Molnar, but got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Game certainly has a different feel to it. Early second half, teams getting up and down the floor. And this is the game that Veritas wants to play, that up and down style, where this legacy team is more a half-court game. Get it down to your bigs. McCreary, off back iron, no. And again, looking to run is Veritas. They lob it up, and it's too tall. That time intended for Scranton. Molinar trying to return the favor on that alley -oop pass. Just a little bit to the right, a little bit too much. Mack with it in the front court. They get it into Howard, triple team now. He finds the cutter and Claxton finishes at the hole. And that's what I wanted to see coming out of halftime. Just get it down to him. You don't have to panic when the double team comes. Let it come, someone has to be open. Really nice job with the composure in that double team. It was three guys at first, and Howard was able to pass out of it. Good job by Claxton moving without the basketball. Now an answer from Gabriel from the short corner. And that's what we didn't see last night from this Veritas team when someone attacks, being able to get out of the paint and find that open space. George Zidane asked for time for Veritas, and Zidane an interesting coach in that he never played basketball beyond his high school team but he says that he very much enjoys coaching for him it's all about the matchups as we take one more look at that cutter from Claxton but Zidane enjoys the strategy and has worked his way up as a high school coach and as an AAU coach and those are usually the best coaches because that they're able to see the game from a different perspective when you play you're able to see it from the player's perspective but from a coach he sees it from the fan perspective and being able to just bring that to the game combined with that he is a player's coach has really done well for this Veritas team. And this is a Veritas team still working to get their chemistry. They are in their first year as a program. Zidane helping to launch it this year, but he only knew a couple of the guys prior to September. He said, we had not had a meal together until a few months ago. We're off to a good start, though, 12-2 and two on the season. Claxton for McCreary. They swing it around. Jamison dumps it down low. Great ball movement. McCreary, lefty floater, doesn't go. But a loose ball is put in. And there's Jamison who gets the roll. They're getting good action when they dump it down to Howard. Even though that shot missed, it got Veritas out of position, and they're able to attack the offensive boards. Five-point game and a moving screen. That looks like it was Craver. 
Yeah, he tried to get out of the way on that one. He knew the moving screen was going to be called. Tried to slip it, just got caught. So Legacy now with a chance to trim it to a one-score game. Senior Mack walks it across. Peels back. Jamison took too many steps. Going to get called for that every time. You have to put the ball down first or at least establish a pivot foot. Gabriel again will bring it up. Senior from Arizona again playing this point forward spot. Veritas tonight down a couple men but seem to have found their rhythm in comparison to Anata Go. Smith tried to feed it inside, it's knocked down, and now he turns it over. Great defense from Howard right there, using his length to his advantage. He doesn't have to get up all up on the offensive player, he's able to just keep him at arm's length. And Brandon, you mentioned it, with Veritas traveling, they now have the turnover. Scranton up ahead, nearly threw it away, Smith comes down with it, turn around, doesn't go. Uh, but as I started to say, Veritas traveling, they had a day to kind of collect themselves. And it wasn't just that they were traveling from the West Coast. They had a pit stop in Vegas where they went 4-0 in a holiday tournament right before this. Molinar switching hands, draws the foul. And that is when he is at his best. He's in the open court, being able to get into the paint and make the defense foul you. And to your point before, this Veritas team coming in, it seemed like they had a little bit of jet lag last night, Matt. They didn't really have their legs under them. You can see that in the jump shooting and even attacking the basket. It seemed a little bit gassed. But once you get that second breath and we're on to the second day, you adjust to the time zone, you adjust to the atmosphere, and as you see, they're more comfortable today. Molinar last night had nine. His average on the season is almost 20. Cruz, who is not playing tonight, their second leading scorer, at, or actually their leading scorer at 21. Had just six in the game last night. Cruz went for 31 in a game out in that Vegas tournament. Free throw up and good from Molinar. Seven point lead. Entry pass knocked down. Foul called from behind as they look to get it into Calhoun Tucker. And that's what you have to do against this Veritas team. Make them foul you. Make them contest the pass into the post. The Prairie off the inbound to Mack and now Jamison. They work it around the perimeter. Running a play for Claxton. Defense is there. The Prairie up top. Calhoun Tucker. Pump fakes. Goes up. Draws the foul. This is great, great coaching by B.J. Jackson last night. He came off the floppy drop down screen and they're able to get it to Calhoun in the post where he just goes right into the body of the defender, absorbs the contact, and with that right hand just kisses it softly off the glass. We talked about the size of Howard at 6'11". Well, his replacement stands at 6'9", in Calhoun Tucker. And he converts on the three-point play. A look right there at B.J. Jackson in his seventh season and. He said to you, Brandon, he's looking to get the most out of the basketball talent in a predominantly football state. Yeah, as we mentioned before, Greenville is 20 minutes away from Clemson. As you know, Clemson played earlier today. And when you have so much football talent in such a football-rich state, it's hard to find basketball players. Claxton with a weak side rejection. And a loose ball foul will give Veritas possession. Excuse me, legacy possession. Four point game. Quickly into the front court. McCreary, lefty floater, doesn't get the roll. 36 32. Gabriel blocked away, draws the foul. And that's the difference on this end. Gabriel attacked the body of McCreary. McCreary didn't attack the body of Gabriel and just settled for the floater. We talked about the free throw disparity at the half. Veritas went four for four at the line. Meanwhile, in the first half, Legacy just two for 10. Yeah, and Legacy lost a lot of categories in that first half. They lost the turnover battle, the rebound battle, the free throw battle, but still, they were not down by a lot, and that had to be a bode of confidence for them coming into the second half. 
Yeah, just a four-point game at the half. Right now it stands at five. Currenton back on the floor. He hit that three in the waning seconds of the opening half. See him right there wearing number 12. Side by side with Molinar. Second free throw good from Gabriel. Nice follow through right there by Gabriel. Keep that gooseneck up. Jamison will walk the ball up court. Jamison more noted for his play on the defensive end where he leads the team and steals. A great on-ball defender. Curriton. Trying to shake free, cannot. To Claxton now. Nine to shoot. Jamison asking for a screen. Five to shoot. He'll go the opposite way. Scoop shot, no good. And now a breakout. Up ahead, Gabriel, two-hand jam. Nice two-hand jam right there. As you see him leaking out on the break. We had three Veritas players all vying for that dunk. It just ends up in his hands. Into double figures now is Gabriel with 11. Down low, they get it to Calhoun Tucker. Double team comes, he lost the ball. Veritas again looking to push. Molinar to the corner. Raver back up top, they'll work it around and slow it down. Veritas here in the second half doing a much better job turning defense into offense and Rodney Howard at the scores table will check in at the next dead ball. Gabriel off the window, doesn't get the roll and the rebound controlled by Calhoun Tucker. Claxton driving dish, Currents in for three. That's no good and Gabriel has been active on both ends of the floor. I think they got Molinar though for fouling on the rebound. Still a good job boxing out from the Veritas team. That's what I've been really impressed with is their ability to box out, then go get the ball. It's one thing to box out, but sometimes the offensive player is able to jump over you and get the ball. They're doing a great job on the boards. Molinar now to the bench. Free throws coming for McCreary. One and one free throws as Veritas has now committed 17 fouls and McCreary hits the front end. McCreary will be participating in the dunk contest at the end of this tournament. He and Molinar, I believe, both participants in that event. Two for two that time goes McCreary. And for McCreary, we're used to seeing him fill it up. He had games of 37 and 30 this season. He's got offers from DePaul, South Florida, Georgia State, and Xavier. Rated six best in his class for South Carolina. Gabriel the drive and ditch. Scranton from the corner. Not that time, and it drops to the floor right at the feet of Calhoun Tucker. McCurry feeds it down low. Howard, hop step, up with the right hand, no good. Loose ball, Gabriel on it, jump ball. For Howard, that was a nice move down there, attacking the smaller defender, but I would love for him to use the glass. You turn a 60% shot into a 30% shot. Six point game, 45 seconds left to play third quarter. Two man game up top for Veritas. Shot clock down to 10. Gabriel going to work. Pull up from Craver. Got nothing but air. 13 seconds, first, uh, third quarter. McCreary penetrates. Lefty finish draws the foul. And that's what you want to see from McCreary. Go into the body of the defender. We saw him settle for that floater a lot of times. You get to the line every time. Just attack the body. You're a strong finisher. Keep going to the basket. 
So he'll have a chance to make it a one possession game. Four seconds remaining on the game clock following this and one opportunity. Scranton off the rebound to Gabriel. Two to fire, gets it off in time and wide left. And at the end of three, it's Veritas 40 and Legacy 36. Back with the final quarter after this timeout. You're watching NFHS Network Hoops live on Facebook Watch. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Veritas up by four at the end of three quarters of play, and Legacy has gotten back into it, gotten a little bit of momentum, but Veritas turning defense into offense. Here is some of the momentum for Legacy, though. This was McCreary driving, finishing through contact. And that's what you want to see him do, finish through the contact. Don't shy away from it. You are a big forward. You're at six feet, seven inches. You should be able to go over most of these high school defenders and go right into their body. You and I have a great vantage point perched up top here with the camera angle that you see now. That's basically what we're looking at, but it doesn't quite give us the same appreciation for just how big these guys are. Exactly. They look like ants from up there. It looks like we could go out there and give them a go, Matt. Maybe you, not I. <laughs> McCreary on the handoff. No good off the window. And here comes the outlet, Molinar all alone, and he throws down another one. And again, Molinar wants to walk with the Skywalkers as he flies through the air for the Thunder Dunk. Six point game. Calhoun Tucker, facing up now, bounce pass, that's a tough handle, and three seconds called against Legacy. One more look at Molinar. Howard chased him back, but didn't want to contest. He is just such an athlete, and he's able to get to anywhere he wants to on the court. He just settles too much like for this jumper right here. He missed it from the top of the key. Claxton up with it. McCreary now in between the circle. Caleb Mack surveying. They get it to Howard. Howard turns and travels. Nice idea right there to change up his game and face up. He's been ba backing the defender down this entire game. Nice change up, nice idea. You just have to put the ball down first. Molinar now will handle. He's been primarily an off-ball guard so far this game with Gabriel bring it, bringing it up the court. And Smith is now called for a moving screen away from the ball, but as I started to say, Gabriel begins the fourth quarter on the bench. And they've been calling that a lot in this tournament. You're going to have to set as a picker, and for the pick E, you're going to have to wait for them to be set. Stoppage now by the official. I think the table was supposed to signal a substitution and didn't as Gabriel checks in. He'll take the place. Of Damon Reyes, who was on the floor briefly. And to your point, Brandon, I think the two calls we've seen the most in this tournament from officials so far are traveling and moving screens. And two points of emphasis, I would say, in the high school game. And it's something these guys will have to clean up if 
they want to continue to succeed at higher levels. Exactly. It's the fundamentals of basketball. Put the ball down first and get your feet set on screens. It's truly just fundamentals, and it's, I'm glad the refs are calling it. Sheamus in for Claxton. And he's called for a foul before the shot attempt. Nice for Claxton to step through that double team right there, being able to get his foot over there two feet. A little bit of tripping. Uh, I don't know if he was in the act of shooting, but they're going to give it to him. Wow. I, I'm a little bit surprised on that, but Claxton will go to the free throw line. Claxton, the 6'6 senior off the mark, and Veritas continues to struggle at the line. Offensive rebound, putback doesn't fall, and on the third effort, the Lions able to cash in. Lexi's getting back to what they were doing in that first quarter, which is being able to control the offensive boards and get those second chances. Smith on the outside, Craver dumps it into Gabriel. Met by two defenders, he draws the foul. That is a strong move right there, going right into the body of the defender for Gabriel. As we said, he's really becoming a more of an offensive threat for this team. And as you see, they, they trust him down there in the post. Gabriel now at the free throw line. And he makes. Gabriel right around his season average. He has 12 points right now. 13.3 is his per game mark. And he now has 13. What has really impressed me tonight about this Veritas team is their defensive rotation. Much better than the night before. Jamison into Howard. Back outside. McCreary's triple. Won't go. Smith with the rebound. Looks to outlet. Gabriel able to secure it near midcourt. 5.20 to play here in the fourth quarter. Gabriel steps into the three, and it's another off-ball moving screen called against Veritas. Again, you have to set, and again, you have to wait for him to be set. They've been calling it all game. You can't be mad at the ref for making a call that he's been calling all game. Legacy looking to trim into the deficit. Mack at the controls. Crisscross on the down screen. Three-pointer left short that time from Jamison. And a foul on the rebound will go against Gabriel as Howard ripped it away. I want to see them get Howard more touches. The last two possessions, they settled for those corner threes. And they've both been short. Uh, as you get later into the game, your legs are going to go. So let's try to get the ball back inside. Let's try to just create layups off of that. And one of the most exciting plays, as well as one of the most technical plays, I would say, this game, was when he passed out of a double team and hit Claxton cutting right down the lane. And that's what you get with Howard. He's 6'11". He can see over every defender in the gym. So he should be your first option. Triple from Smith off front rim. A reset as Molinar has it near midcourt. Gabriel calls for it. Molinar wants it back. 15 to shoot. Molinar gets ahead of Steen. Craver, foot on the line. He knocks it down. And now a timeout taken by Veritas. That's the worst shot in basketball. Is a long contested two, but he's able to knock it down right there. So we've talked about the size of this tournament, Brandon. 120 teams from across the country. Veritas, the first from California. But one thing we haven't really gotten into so far that we ought to touch on as we take one last look at Molinar on the drive and dish and this knockdown jumper from Craver is just how impactful this tournament is on the Salisbury region here in Wicomico County. And this is a 
an area that really thrives on tourism. And they're just about 30 minutes from the beach. Most of the money making is done in the summer months. But this tournament has a $2 million economic impact on the community. Yeah, and that just speaks to how large this event has gotten. This has become one of the main staples events on the East Coast for high school basketball, the biggest tournament in high school basketball. And just for this community, we saw the Wicomico team playing earlier and the gym was full and that shows you how much this community loves basketball. It was the loudest we've heard it in two days, no question about it. Just to give you a sense of the impact on surrounding businesses, I was told on the phone this week by tournament director James Simmons that last year McDonald's ran out of burgers. That is the impact on 120 different teams showing up and wanting some fast food. <laughs> McDonald's running out of burgers, that is something new. But of course, movies, restaurants, hotels, all feeling the impact, as well as local community foundations that also partner with different sponsors of this tournament. And so far, it's been a tremendous event. And I'm sure that will continue. Traveling called that time on Jamison, who is looking around for an explanation. He did move his pivot foot. That's the correct call. You got to be able to keep that plant foot down. Eight-point game, Veritas with the lead and the basketball. Gabriel spinning, dishing, Smith the triple. Flat shot, left short. Smith, you have to use your legs on that one. It's late in the game, it's your second day here. Use your legs, get some more lift on that jump shot. Rejected from behind, Smith raised up. I think Craver actually was the one that got a piece of it. It'll stay with Legacy. 22 on the shot clock. Bound to Jamison. They get it down low to Howard. Power dribble, righty hook, and that falls. Nice feathery touch by Howard right there. Goes into the power move right to, right to the soft finish. You got to get more of that. That's easy work right there that you're able to create in the half court. And that's his first field goal since the opening possession. Now a steal for Jamison. All alone, lays it up and in. Now you see how that's able to spark a run. You see the ball go through the basket. That gets everybody mojo going. And now we got a ball game on our hands, Matt. Eight-point lead trimmed to four. Defense to offense. Craver bothered on the ball by Mack. He'll give it up. Molinar steps back, lost it, no call. And Howard has it. Mack up ahead. Jamison, the leaner. That's off the mark, a hurried shot. Second look at it though. Claxton in the driving dish. And before the shot, a blocking foul is called. Probably a good foul right there. You were about to give up another corner three and that was about to cut this game to one point. Double bonus now as Legacy is at the line with Chase Claxton. The 73% free throw shooter on the season again. Legacy has struggled at the line today. That's been the difference in the game. Through three quarters of play, Veritas was 9 for 9, and Legacy was just 5 of 14. Claxton gets the roll, 2 for 2 on this trip. And now some full court pressure from the Lions. Yeah, all in our one on one with Jamison. And if you're Veritas, this is what you want right now. You want the ball in Muller's hand, and then be able to create off this high pick and roll. Two and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. Shaping up to be an exciting finish. We had game one come down to the wire, a 68-65 victory for Newman Garetti over Gilman. Molinar all the way to the cup, finishes. Great move right there. You see what type of offensive talent he is, being able to use those angles and cut the defender off before the defender can cut him off and get the easy layup. Game high 19 for the Mississippi State commit. Here's Howard waiting for the double team. That time the help defense slides over into the paint and knocks away the entry pass. It looked like the same play earlier this half, but right there, Veritas able to get a better rotation on that, get the deflection, and get the ball into Molinar's hands. 
Gabriel will reset. Shot clock at 12. Turns down the screen from Smith. Now he'll use it. Six to shoot. Gabriel to Smith. Three ball up. He banks it home. Great shot right there from Smith. You see him use his legs a little bit more on that and able to get the lift on that jump shot. He left his last three three-pointers short. That time made sure to overcompensate. And if it's short, it can't go in. If it's long, it can. <laughs> that is a fundamental of this game, Matt. But for this Veritas team, they have just really controlled this game from the beginning of that second quarter until now. In that first quarter, it took them a little bit to get their legs under them. And now you see Molinar, he got out in the transition a little bit. And now you see them being able to work off this high screen and roll. One more look. Banks open for Smith. Late fourth quarter in this one. Again, it's 51 to 44. Veritas on top. Two more games each of the next two days. Tomorrow we'll be on the air a little bit earlier at 3.15. Newman Garetti facing another team locally. That's Delaney at 3.15. And then at 5, we'll see Veritas one more time. They'll battle Lincoln Academy out of Georgia. Yeah, and when we talk about this Veritas team, a lot of their players are coming from international waters and you talk about them traveling here a lot of their players had to travel to california molinar is from panama and then you have ismail cruz from puerto rico we'll see a lot of international flavor even more so on that lincoln team tomorrow physical screen set by howard bodies flying everywhere it's an offensive foul that was a nice screen right there by howard nothing illegal about that he was set you just have to call that out if you're the defense and not have your man end up on the ground. Told you today the storyline was future opponents in the SEC squaring off with Howard and Molinar at Mississippi and Mississippi State respectively. Tomorrow, it'll be a pair of future teammates, Molinar and Elias King, also headed to Mississippi State. And when we look at Elias King, him and Molinar, what a dynamic duo they might be able to create at Mississippi State. You have Molinar, the creator, and Elias King is a high flyer as well. The SEC becoming more and more of a basketball conference. Tennessee, most notably, climbing up inside the top ten. They were at number three last I checked. This is Gabriel getting it across the timeline. Gabriel all the way to the hole. Switches hands and lays it in. And that's what you want to see from Gabriel. He is that Lamar Odom type, being able to handle the ball at his size. And as you see right there, able to adjust his body as well. Back the other way, the finish from Claxton, who's got 10. Meanwhile, Gabriel with 15 to complement the 19 from Iverson Molinar. And for this legacy team, you don't have a lot of time. So you have to create something off this press. Be able to get them moving a little bit faster. They were able to do that to play before, but that was just too good of offense from Gabriel. Full court pressure, seven point game. Under a minute to go. Dangerous pass, but somehow it finds the hands of Molinar. Gives up his dribble in between two defenders. Lost it on the floor. Able to find Gabriel. And a timeout is taken by BJ Jackson. No, a 10 second call. I saw Jackson out on the floor. His team didn't have the ball, so he could not have called timeout in that situation, but he was jumping up and down in the face of the official, and Brandon Green all over a 10-second call. Yeah, it was preaching for the call. It looked like 10 seconds. It definitely felt like 10 seconds, and they were able to get the call right. So legacy in need of a couple of buckets and a couple of stops. 47 seconds to play. We talked about wanting to establish the inside in Howard, but here in the latter stages, where do you like them to turn? You have to keep attacking. Uh, as you see right there, Howard with the putback slam, and that's based off the attack. You have a, we have a lot of time in this game. You got about two or three more possessions, and that is enough to get you right back in it. And now B.J. Jackson asks for time. So he wants to... Draw something up, maybe for this ensuing press. He just got a 10-second call last time. Yeah, it's now just a five-point game. 
And for this Veritas team, I think they're drawing up something in the huddle right now just to even break that press. A lot of the players were down the court in the front court. You have to get to the back court, help out, and bring the ball up the court, and then you're able to get into your four-corner offense, your offense that is able to run this clock out. Legacy, a veteran of this Governor's Challenge. They're playing in it for the fourth consecutive season. Meanwhile, we told you Veritas in their very first year as a program. George Zidane said he picked the Governor's Challenge over a list of other East Coast tournaments. He was set on bringing his team to this side of the country. And he built the program as a bridge from AAU to the college ranks. They've partnered with the Academy of Sports Science, which is where his students get their online education done while they are traveling with a national schedule certainly a rigorous one as they found themselves in vegas and now here in salisbury yeah when i was speaking to coach jackson earlier in the week he said they wanted to go national because they wanted stronger competition he wanted to see exactly where his team is he felt that they can compete on a national level and he was recruiting players to compete on a national level 39 seconds to play five point game veritas to inbound and a foul is committed by Currenton. That was a near steal, but Gabriel was able to save it on the deflection. And now for this Veritas team, the game is won. You just have to make a couple of free throws, and now just make your free throws, go home with your first win of the Governor's Challenge. Free throws have been a strength of this Veritas team so far. Again, they made their first nine in the game. Gabriel, a familiar member at the charity stripe. He has looked for contact early and often. But misses here. Legacy pushing. 35 seconds to play. Jamison down the lane, draws the foul. And he'll head to the line in a bonus situation. And that is exactly what you wanted if you were Legacy. Get the clock stop, and now you have a chance to go get some points. Two shots upcoming for C.J. Jamison. Six-foot senior. Trying to make it a one-possession game. Lead down to four. B.J. Jackson over the course of these last couple sequences doing a really nice job going offense-defense. Sends Howard to the bench here. I'm sure he'll get him back in on the offensive side the next dead ball. Second free throw coming from Jamison. Three-point game. Full court pressure. They get it to Gabriel. He slips the sideline, throws it away. But stepping out of bounds on the catch was Little. Cameron Little onto the floor for the first time for defensive purposes along with Saquon Currenton. Was unable to save it before his foot touched down. 27 seconds to play. Shot clock turned off. And a foul before the inbound will send Molinar to the free throw line. And for Molinar this game, he is really... Just changed his game from the beginning of that first quarter to now we're seeing him get to the free throw line in that first quarter forcing it a little bit but now you see him getting right back into his game i'm surprised matt they just called that a common foul usually when it happens before the ball is seen as a technical type of foul and you get the ball back I think it varies level to level. Certainly in the NBA, that's the case. But at the high school ranks, a little bit more leeway in that situation. Second free throw up and good. And a travel before the shot as Claxton shuffled his feet. And what Missed a, opportunity there. Could have made it back to a one-possession game. And what a great game for this Veritas team on the boards. Coming into the fourth quarter, they were leading the boards 25-20. to 20. Looking to get it in one last time. They do to Gabriel. Nearly walked. Now a turnover and a foul. Mack held on his way to the rim, and this one not quite over yet. 
thought B.J. Jackson was about to jump out of his skin on that when he wanted to travel, but I guess he'll take the steal as well and the foul. So Legacy needing a couple of free throws and then a steal. Jamison at the line. Hit on a couple a moment ago. One more here. Second free throw upcoming from Jamison. Eyes it, flies it, good. Three point game. They get it in. Molinar spinning away from traffic. Behind the back, gets it into the front court and then is whistled. Great ball handling right there by Molinar. It seemed like he got himself into a little bit of trouble, but with just one slip behind the back, gets himself out. So he'll head to the line, a chance to for all intents and purposes, put it away. 55-52, 14 tanks left. As McCreary re-enters for offense. That's Howard's what, still on the bench. They, they're going to need a three. It makes sense. That's one name we haven't really heard this fourth quarter is McCreary. It seems as though he's disappeared in this fourth quarter. 12 points in the game, but I would agree with you it. Has not been a lot of contribution down the stretch. Four point game, one more free throw coming from Molinar. Off the mark on the second. Up ahead, Jamison. Pump fake, three ball short. Offensive board put back there for McCreary. And a timeout taken by B.J. Jackson. Six seconds to go. Two-point game. And now Legacy going to do all they can to get a steal. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Does Legacy go for the steal right away, or do they try to force them into some type of turnover? You only have six seconds, so that decision is going to have to be quick. Again, join us right back here tomorrow afternoon. Our first game comes your way at 3.15. It'll be Delaney from Baltimore facing off with Newman Garetti out of Philadelphia. And then in game two, Veritas Prep one more time on our network facing off with Lincoln Academy from Suwanee, Georgia. Either team talking things over and with Molinar and Gabriel, both very comfortable ball handlers. You would think it would be one of those two that they try to get it in. It'll be interesting to see. It looks like McCreary will guard the inbound. Smith can run the baseline. Still looking, tipped out of play. That was very close to a five-second call right there. No time went off the clock. At least no full seconds. That might be what the referees are talking about now at midcourt. Now Smith cannot run the baseline, though, as it was out of bounds, not after a made basket. So while Legacy did not get the steal, they do place an extra limitation on the inbound. Boys Legacy team, they did a great job of denying before and being able to force them into a pass that they really didn't want to throw. Um, he was behind the backboard, which is the last position that you want to be in this type of environment, in this type of game right now. You have to understand where you are, but now you can't move at all. You're going to have to throw it from that spot. They added a second. So seven on the clock. Referee still discussing. Shows 7.2 in the arena. Our score bug doesn't quite go to decimals. And the conversation still ongoing at the scores table.
They change it to 6.7, and Molinar is fouled on the inbound. So Molinar will now head down to the other side of the floor, needing to make both. Legacy foul quickly. That only took one second, one official second off the clock, but Molinar can basically ice it if he makes both of his free throws right here. Legacy again coming off a very successful campaign a season ago. They went 25-8. and eight. They were previously named Legacy Charter, but changed that official name of their school to Legacy Early College to better represent that they're not a boarding school. Molinar rises and hits. Three-point game. One more big free throw coming for the senior Molinar. Two for two. Three throws have been money for this Veritas team. Jamison all the way to the rim. The follow doesn't go. And that's the horn. Legacy hanging tough all the way to the buzzer. But Veritas hanging on for a 58-54 win. Great win from this Veritas team. Totally different team than we saw the night before, Matt. They were better on defense, better on the boards. And for Mulliner, he was better for three quarters. That first quarter, he wasn't really himself. Then you saw him be able to get into the transition, which changed, which turned into his jump shot, which turned into this whole Veritas team getting more into a flow. Yesterday, a big reason why they lost was Central Point was able to turn defense into offense. I feel like Veritas kind of made that their identity in this game. They got out and ran, and that's really when they surged in front after getting down 7 nothing. Yeah, and for them, especially going up against this Legacy team, you knew that Legacy was going to try to use their size. In that first quarter, they were able to do that effectively. Within the rest of the game, they did it in spots, but they weren't able to do it for the entirety of the game. So a four-point win for Veritas here tonight. That caps off two exciting days of this tournament. Two more coming up. We hope you join us tomorrow. Again, we are on the air just before our 3.15 tip-off time for another doubleheader here tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you next time here on the NFHS Network Hoops Live on Facebook Watch.